Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today, we're exploring the 24th episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers titled The Spit Flower. We begin with Kimberly and Tommy romantically building a weird ass miniature float in the youth center with a ton of flowers out of garbage bags. Apparently, Kim's prized design is going to be in the generic parade, and no one seems to question why there's a big ass tiger in the middle of it. Wouldn't this make sense as a Trini focused episode? Bulk and Skull roll on in, and they quickly leave because Bulk gets bad allergies to all the flowers. Yep. No need to worry though because Rita is watching this for some reason and she decides that she's not going to let Kim have any joy whatsoever. Tommy and Kim are still working on the float when putties drop in and start attacking the two and honestly it's a pretty good fight between them and one of the putties just straight up goes for the float and flips the table it's on, completely demolishing it. The other rangers show up just as the putties evaporate and disappear and Kimberly is so crushed by her float being destroyed. Apparently it was supposed to be done by the end of that day and the rangers all tried to to emote with Kim, but honestly, Amy Jo Johnson just shows that she's too damn good for this show by crying actual tears. Trini tells her to cheer up because there's going to be other parades, and Kim says something that genuinely touched me. And Rita will probably destroy that too. It's kind of hyper realistic for such a dumb plot, but I love it. On the moon, Finster discusses his new Spitflower monster, which is a weird beetle puppet thing that turns flowers into tiny finger puppets to drain the energy from humans. This episode's actually doing pretty damn well so far. They clean up the mess of the demolished float made while Kim sits at the juice bar sulking in her misery. Tommy says that he has an idea of how to cheer up Kim, but he's gotta go do it alone and leaves. Then a nice little moment happens where the other rangers have to call out to Kim to come to them because they're being summoned to the command center. Kim wipes the tears away from her eyes and teleports with the rest of them. Never mind, this never could have been a Trini story. Zoran informs the rangers about the spit flower monster, to which Kimberly is now just getting pissed about this because it seems like she just can't have anything nice anymore. The rangers morph to fight him and they're attacked by the crazy flowers. Just as they get the velcroed beast off of them, Rita makes the split flower grow and it's time to interrupt Tommy. Where is Tommy? In Billy's garage for some reason? I hope he asked for permission. He morphs to the scene and straight up fires a laser at a giant monster and protects the other rangers. Nothing like showing up to show off, huh? The giant monster starts sucking up all the flowers in the city and green, black, yellow, and blue call out their dinosaurs to form the Mega Dragon Zord slash Dragon Zord in fighting mode slash whatever the hell they're calling it this week. There's a pretty intense Zord monster fight and Alpha teleports the rangers out of there to regroup them. Why? Because apparently the spit flower shrunk again after they left? What? We check in on Bulk and Skull, who are in the park, being attacked by finger puppet flowers as well. Rough day for Bulk. The Rangers morph back to action sans Tommy since they say that Tommy needs to be the survivor of the other five in case they all die. And Kim uses her power bow to make the spit flower just, you know, vomit up all the flowers that he sucked up. They bring together the power cannon and blow him away. That was random. Tommy says they're not done yet though because he needs Alpha's help. At Billy's lab, Tommy and Alpha work together with some tools and Alpha gets glue stuck to his hand. Comedic gold. At the youth center the next day, Jason and Zach are sparring while just loudly proclaiming that they just fought this monster yesterday. Like wow, you guys suck at this whole secret identity thing. Ernie calls everyone over to watch the parade and we get a dorky moment where Billy is using binoculars to watch it so he feels like he's really there. Kim comes in with Tommy and she's upset because she doesn't want to watch the damn parade but Trini tells her to and lo and behold, her float is there after all. Turns out, Tommy and Alpha stayed up all night recreating the design of her float for the parade and got it entered into the contest in time. Part of me wishes that the tiger would just have like an upside down head for some reason. We end on Bulk and Skull coming up and Zack wows us with a third character trait. Doing magic! He pulls flowers out from under his sleeve and Bulk and Skull cower and run away from the things. The end. This episode was actually pretty damn good. It's obvious that Amy Jo Johnson was the perfect choice for the role of Kimberly, and she was one of the few principal actors with training. Seriously, the girl was a gymnast, singer, and actor. Could do it all. The story is kind of depressing because Rita just tried to psychologically break down Kimberly via the float destruction, and it worked. I would prefer a story where Kim is a little bit more shaken in her confidence in the battle, and then when she regains it, that's when they win, but what can you do? Next time, things will continue to be strained, but until then, may the power protect you.